So in this class, we are going to look to adding a storage layer in AWS Solution Architect and in the AWS Amazon Services. So if you look to this architecture, we are going to study this architecture every lesson in order to build highly available, highly scalable architecture. And today we are going to learn how we can host a static website in Amazon S3. The cafe had just started up and they want to establish a simple static website that provides customer with basic information about the cafe, like menu, store hours, location, and more. Currently, they don't have any marketing strategy and they want to gain new customers. And when someone walks by, notice the cafe and decides to give it a try, the cafe has a very good quality of coffee and desserts. So they suggested to them that they should expand their community awareness by hosting the cafe website and make that website available for custom. For this, they are going to use Amazon S3. Amazon S3 is an object storage service. It enables you to store virtually unlimited amount of data and data files are stored as objects. You place objects in a bucket which you define and you create. Every bucket must have a name that is globally unique across regions. So the bucket name must be unique, not only in that region, but in all regions. The object you store can vary in size from zero byte to five terabyte. And this is like normally an exam question. Each object cannot be larger than five terabyte in size. And it is with unlimited storage. Each object has five consistent characteristics. It has a key, which is basically the name that you assign to an object. And you use that object key to retrieve the object itself. In the management console, you can create directory inside a bucket or a folder and you upload an object to that directory. Amazon S3 does not know about directory. So the key value includes the full path relative to the bucket root ID because Amazon S3 does not know about directories. The second thing the object has is a version ID. In a bucket, a key and a version ID, they are uniquely identify a specific object. The value of the object is the actual content of that object you store. It can be any sequence of bytes. Object values are immutable, which means that after you upload an object, you cannot modify the value. If you want to modify the object, you must make a change outside of Amazon S3 and then you need to re-upload it and the whole entire object need to be replaced. So beside the key, the value and the version ID, the object also has a metadata, which is a set of name value pairs or key value pairs you can use to store information about the object. You can assign a metadata, which is referred to as a user-defined metadata to your object in Amazon S3. Amazon S3 also uses sub-resources to store additional object-specific information. So the benefit of S3, S3 provides us with many features, including high durability. So S3 standard class give you about 11 nines of durability, which means you can afford to lose one document every 200 years. Besides the durability, it also provides you with four nines of availability. And the availability here refers to your ability to access your data quickly when you want it. It also provides a virtually unlimited capacity to store your data. So it is very scalable. And Amazon has S3 has a built-in security feature. It provides you with many control access, as we will see today in the labs, where you can control who can access the object and at what time and based on which pattern of usage. Also, Amazon S3 is highly per Format, which means it's a first byte latency that is measured in milliseconds for most storage classes. Now, S3 can solve a lot of a problem in your AWS console and in your cloud architecture. So let us understand a few use cases where you can employ S3 to your benefit. So the first use case is to store and distribute web content and media. A very common scenario for using Amazon S3 is to use it for media hosting. It can be used in order to store the static part of your website. Those content, including videos, photos, and music files, 
which can be delivered directly from Amazon S3 because each object in Amazon S3 has a unique HTTP URL. Amazon S3 can serve as an origin store for a content delivery network. When you wire S3 with the CloudFront, you can feed your website to CloudFront Edge location directly from S3 hosting. And in this case, you will preserve a lot of bandwidth and also you speed up the performance of your static content that will be retrieved from S3. How we can secure Amazon S3 buckets and objects? When you create an S3 buckets and objects, by default, they are private and protected. When you want to access them, you only have to change the Amazon S3 data and that will manage the control of the data access and normally it follows the principle of least privilege. You can control Amazon S3 access or a specific object in the bucket using Amazon S3 block public access and IAM, the AWS Identity and Access Management, or you can write a bucket policy that define access to a specific buckets or an object. And remember guys, this is what we refer to as a resource-based policy. You can use IAM to configure a bucket policy to grant access across AWS accounts or to grant public or anonymous access to Amazon S3 data. If you use bucket policy, you must carefully write them and test them. If you can specify a denying statement in the bucket policy to restrict access and you can access also that bucket content and test it using the policy simulator that we have in the IAM service. You could also create, and this is an exam question as well guys, so pay attention to it. You can create an S3 access points. Access points are a unique host names that enforce distinct permissions and network controls for requests that are, that are made through it. Customers with shared dataset can scale access for many applications by creating individualized access points with names and permission that are customized for each application. You could also use access control list and similar to what we are going to do in the lab today, where you have an access list defined over the bucket and the object. If you use access list, do not set access that is too open or permissive. The final thing is you can use AWS Trusted Advisor to provide you with bucket permission check feature. It is a useful tool for finding if there is any permissions that open to global access. Now there are three different general approaches to configure access to object in S3. The scenario that you can see here, the default security setting for Amazon S3. All Amazon S3 bucket and object stored in them are private and protected. The only entities with access to a newly created and modified buckets are the account administrator and the account root user. Pay attention to this guys. Also the resource owner can grant a specific access permission to others, but anyone not granted those permissions will not have access. If you look to the scenario in the middle here, we can see that an S3 security setting have been disabled and anyone can publicly access the objects stored in those buckets. The third scenario, you can see that Amazon S3 was configured to provide controlled access. User A was granted access to the objects in the bucket but user B was denied access. A controlled access scenario are more common in the industry. They can be configured by the bucket owner by using one or more of the tools or the options for controlling access to Amazon S3 data that we just described. You could also add encryption to your objects in the bucket. So when you store objects in S3 buckets, you can make those objects use the default op encryption option, which it enables a server-side encryption with Amazon S3 algorithm. You could also have a client-side encryption, and this encryption is more related to the communication that happened between the client, which is maybe your laptop, and the bucket that you have in AWS console. In a client-side encryption, 
you can use this approach to encrypt the data in a transit not at rest so server side encryption guys used for encrypting the data at rest client side encryption is used for encrypting the data in a transit you manage the encryption process the encryption keys and the related tools like server side encryption client side, side encryption can reduce risk by encrypting the data with a key that is stored in a different mechanism than the mechanism that is stored the data itself so normally you don't put the key beside the bucket or inside the bucket and then you encrypt it because this is make the whole thing very weakly secure the second use case for s3 is to host a static website and by seeing this class today and the labs that we are going to do you will find how easy and simple you can host a static content of a website inside s3 now a dynamic website needs most of the time a server side processing and maybe there is a data layer so you have to read for example a kind of data from a database and the server side scripts most likely will be written in php or jsp or node.js or react or any of those uh, server side scripting languages to host a static website all you need to do is to configure your s3 bucket for website hosting and then upload your website content to the bucket also another thing you will find very useful in amazon s3 is called versioning with amazon s3 versioning this is will allow you to prevent the content of the bucket against any accidental deletion and it will give you a process to recover your data if there a failure in your application or when customers accidentally overwrite or delete objects. Versioning is a method of keeping multiple variants of an object in the same bucket. You can use it to preserve, retrieve, and restore every version of every object stored in Amazon S3 bucket. If you delete a specific object, instead of removing it permanently amazon s3 inserts a delete marker in it which becomes the current object version and you can also restore the previous one overwriting an object results in a new object creation and you can always restore to the previous version buckets can be in one of the three states unversioned at all so versioning was not activated or it was enabled this is the second state or versioning suspended after you enable it for that bucket you can never change it to an versioned state you can however suspend a versioning on that bucket at any stage in the future and let us look now how amazon s3 versioning work 